What is up guys, the Retro Gamer here with another video. Today we're going to be teaching you how to build uh, so three Yoon's uh, CO2 ionizing laser. Here we want to ionize there. This took me a very long time to just grasp the concept of everything that's going on here. I'm talking months. And I also had to email uh, so three Yoon. And it took around six to eight months just to get like the, the details to this process and, and I actually built everything up to the point of turning on the laser and I never turned it on because I moved on to uh, bigger and better things but I will at least show you my notes and um, see where you guys can go so I'll read through his and then we'll read through mine just to keep you up on progress so let's do this it was supposed that it was supposed that, that, that he's Russian so uh, basically here here he's saying uh, you need a plexiglass plate and you need your electrodes. So plexiglass plate holds an electrode, holds a final capacitor sheet, and that's basically it. So it doesn't say what, what size the plexiglass is, but if you zoom in on this ruler here, you can see that the plexiglass is 55 centimeters long. And his lines that he has drawn on it, are going to be at 25, 25 so an inch basically, and then every quarter of an inch he has another line. So that is not a dielectric, it's just a support. Now building the electrodes is quite difficult, um, and I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself. I actually ordered mine from a company with a CAD drawing because, oh yeah, where did we get there? Um, so we'll skip past that, I did my PDF a little bit out of his. So then he starts wrapping the pre-ionizer on it. He uses tin foil and sprays it with uh, spray adhesive, marks out lines, and cuts it out. Here's what I did. Um, oh, you know what? I skipped that process. Uh, hold on. Hold on. This is, this is my fault. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot here. I haven't typed in this in so long. Okay, right there. So, templates. Make templates. So, here you see the pre-ionizer um, I made a template of. And these other parts, you'll see I made a template out of thick plastic, like folder plastic, I think is what I used. And even the uh, lens cap. And I'll show you the dimensions for everything, so you're not confused as to what's going on. So right there. See, I, I had originally, and these are my pictures, I had originally used aluminum foil, sprayed it down, put paper on the other side of it so that it wouldn't rip. I actually used tape, I'm sorry. And, um... I cut it out, but the problem was it would just rip. The the tin foil would just rip if you do the slightest stupid thing to it. And I and I want to make this so that it's sturdy. So what I ended up doing was if you buy four inch wide aluminum tape, it'll be worth your while. It's very cheap. You take the four inch wide tape, you line it up with your lines here, and then you just cut it out with an X-Acto knife, and you can see it's at 25, 57.5 you know skip 15 in the middle and they're 52 millimeters long out from the base of this you can see my math there uh consumer process yep that's why i did that now you need to place sticky tape down and it's got to be thin sticky tape not thick sticky tape and let's go back to the tutorial so you can see that he covers his entire sheet with a piece of sticky tape but when i actually messaged him he said you want to get air in there so it's better to just do it in the pieces that I have it in, as you can see there. And I actually did that there. You can see my picture of my double sided sticky tape. That was kind of expensive. It's over there, I'm not grabbing it. Um, on top of that goes mylar. So it's like we're sandwiching stuff on it. And the mylar is, goes all the way to the end of the plexiglass, unlike the aluminum foil. And you'll see my dimensions here 28.75 millimeter, and then 57.5, skip 15. Fit, so the math adds up. And once again, make a template of that. Now, see he puts his mylar on there. 
good. Now the conductive strips. Now if you flip the thing over, you're going to be doing a few things. You're going to take a long piece of aluminum that's 27 meters width and 550, you know, whatever, 600 some millimeters long. And you want to wrap it from the back over to the front, or you just laid the mylar, that would be the front. So the back bare plexiglass over to the mylar, which is um, this. And then you also want to take these little strips and wrap them around too. But the problem is, between the little strip and that long piece, you're going to have some adhesive. And you're going to then create micro arcs with high voltage flowing through there. And that's just no good. So what you want to actually do is, um, I made this template. And with this template, all you need to do is trace this on your 4 inch um, tape. And then you can just wrap that on there, wrap those electrodes over. Everything's electrically connected and sound. So you can see I did that there. This is when I was still gluing. There's the template that I just showed you. So now you have all this. Now you put the electrode on there. But we didn't talk about the electrode, and that's very important. So we're going to actually just scroll up. Not that one. Come on. It's, it's a 300 page document, it's going to take a while. Okay. So, wiring one horse machine to. Wow, did I really scroll that far? Okay. Okay, right here. So, the electrode. The electrode itself is 50 centimeters long, okay? From the end, you have a 12 centimeter gap, and then you start your holes. And the holes are 6 millimeters apart from one another, and they're triangled like that, and they have to be like that. Don't question me. Um, and you can see all the dimensions there for the holes, and then the holes need to be countersunk. So this is the or counterboard. So there's the counterboard side, and there's just the whole side. And the side that sits down on the mylar, because that's where you're putting this, um, so, oh my goodness. so here you can use JB weld, and you want to lay the counterbore side down on top of the mylar, and you can see how everything's folding up onto it. Um, so this is the front, and you just want to use a little little uh, toothpick and take your JB weld and put it in between these little spots here. So there you want to put it, there you want to put JB weld just to hold that metal down. There, there, there. You don't want to glob it because the laser beam path is right here. So if you put too much here or you put any here at all, um, you could obscure the uh, laser path. The next thing is spacing, so you want a 2 millimeter gap between the two electrodes. And for that to happen, since my electrodes were 2 millimeters thick, I needed 8 millimeters uh, spacers. And those spacers were 50 centimeters long, as you can see they're going in between the gaps. And I 3D printed them. Uh, you could use anything, but everything's got to be precise. Uh, if this side's 0.2 higher millimeters than this side, uh, no lasing will happen. That's why I 3D printed it. So there you can see what it should look like now. And you'll have little tail ends hanging off the... Uh, um, and you don't see that because this is a different design. I think i got to go back up there. Anyway. So I hope you're still following me so far. Um, but if, if you're still curious about this and you're still here, I will answer you. Um, I will answer you. We're almost there. I struggled with the passages for a while. That's what all that is. Come on, almost there. Okay, right there. So, when you finish, you'll have that'll that'll be what it looks like when you press everything on top of each other. 
And then you just take the ends and you just wrap them around and put a little piece of tape so that they hold at the top. And you can see that he does that. See, there he does his thing. He puts his electrodes on. Uh, he uses super glue on the back side, but you don't want to just glob the thing up. You can't get those holes covered. And then you just want to bend everything up. There's the spacers. He flips everything on top of each other. And then right there, he just folds everything over. And it looks like a, like a subway sub. I wouldn't need it. He solders it. But remember, we used our, this is the back side now. We used that tape, and you don't need to solder because there will be no micro arcing anyway. Now we get into the actual laser chamber. He uses a 2 inch piece of PVC, uh, to which that is what I use. Uh, there it is. And he has screws going in. See, there he marks it, there he drills it, and there he puts the screws in, and he puts the whole thing in there. Do be careful when you're putting the screws in, you'll break the plexiglass if you're not too careful. So there I show you where to drill the holes. You can drop the thing in, put the screws in, and there you go. Now you're looking good. And that's what it should look like if you look at it through down through the tube. And there he also has it. Now here is the weird part, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this all in one video. So this is, let me grab it actually, I have one. This is a end cap. The one end connects to the PVC, and the other end has the mirror on it. And obviously, the, well, this tube's going to be vacuumed down. There's going to be gas in there, so everything's got to be airtight. So in here, this is a actually this is a toilet ring, um, very airtight and watertight. And um, so basically, PVC connects here, mirror is here. If this is off by just a little bit, like it's not perfectly parallel with the other mirror, um, your beam won't get amplified enough and you'll get no ionization. So you need to use these three little screws that are on here and tighten each one microscopically until you get it to work. But it's so you don't have to take this off out of its glue, re-glue it after you readjust something. You know what I'm saying? So this is very useful and I'll show you how to build that here in a second. See, he has his gas coming in through these mounts. I don't. And there you go. Um, and here's mine. So, ignoring that, ignoring that, ignoring that. Okay, here we go. So there's my triangle that I built. Go ahead and copy those dimensions. Everything's the same. And then there's the actual finished product. You just drill holes. You put your... your ring in. I had to cut it a little bit with scissors. And then put your screws in, make it a little tight. I dropped mine in water and just held it under to see if water would get in and then I deemed it airtight. Drilling holes for gas. You want to put a hole here for input and then a hole on the other side for vacuuming out. Uh, that's for input of gas, out for vacuum. Don't put them right next to each other. Um, I'm all of mine. So you can see here he just skips right to these pictures. Um, so there's that input of gas, there's that vacuum out. Now the gas consists of uh, oxygen and CO2 and helium. And it's a 1 to 1 to 6 ratio. So that's one part oxygen, one part CO2, and one part, or six parts helium. And that goes in one end and, and then vacuum out to a 300 torr vacuum is what I believe it is. Um, that's, I know that's what it is. It's not the same. So here you see those Soviet capacitors, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I use Soviet capacitors. And I'll grab it for the video going to end here. It's this. These are very expensive, and I'm going to make this two parts of the video. So I'll come back and explain that a little more in detail. But this is part one, how to do everything up the capacitor bank. Basically, those capacitors are very expensive, but they're low inductance, and they're 4,700 picofarad, and they're USSR, so you got to get them from Russia. Spent $150 on them, and then you just drill the angle aluminum and hook it all up. And these are peakers, but I'll get into that later. Thanks, guys.